in a lot of these videos, and in a lot of the writing actually I'm doing around the side of these videos, I'm talking about knowledge. And as I think I said before, you know, it's I'm 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 using it as a term, although I'm not um, altogether happy with it, simply because it has a it has such a multivalent existence as a term. I can't um, I can't find a better term for now, so I'm going to keep using it. Although I may substitute knowing occasionally. Uh, so I'm trying to think about what I mean about that idea, just to revisit that concept. As I've already said, you know, there's lots and lots of different um, expressions for knowledge. It has quite a complex taxonomy as a term. You know, we do talk about objective and subjective and embodied and carnal and um, tacit and explicit and all those are the terms that I've mentioned before. So it has quite a complex set of parameters around it, but uh, uh, you know what? What sort of key ideas distinguish knowledge from perhaps other manifestations of thought? Other relationships to um, ideas and uh, and phenomena. And here I'm thinking of um, of two things really. One is the I guess. I think it's probably Aristotelian, but it might be Platonic. No, I think it's Platonic definition of knowledge as uh, justified true belief. And I think what Plato was doing there was distinguishing uh, this thing called knowledge from, from true belief itself. Because clearly we can believe things which aren't true. Um, in fact, I'm sure I believe lots of things that aren't true all the time. Do, do they constitute knowledge? Well, probably not. I can also believe things uh, that, I, that I, I can also truly believe things, by which I mean that there's no doubt in my mind. I, I, I truly believe that there's a bench uh, over here, and I can see it with my eyes, and all those sort of um, sensory responses are uh, active, and I, uh, so it's a true belief. I truly believe that Phoebe, my dog down here, is a genuine animal, not a robot. It's not a... It's not something that I hold in any sort of partial way. So Plato is distinguishing those true beliefs from justified true beliefs, which is ones that presumably make some kind of an appeal to evidence beyond... Uh, well, just beyond my random firings of neurons which are producing these proposals that Phoebe isn't a robot and really is a bench over there. Uh, and a colleague of mine recently talked about evidence. He said that you know, evidence is that which convinces, which is true. It also begs the question, though, I think, because lots of things convince. Lots of things provide justification for belief, which aren't necessarily knowledge-producing. At least I wouldn't say they were. Um, or, or produce a certain subsection of knowledge, not necessarily, um, not necessarily an all-embracing term which covers that whole taxonomy I mentioned. So, for example, um, an appeal to Holy Scripture might, for some people, justify their honestly held true beliefs about certain events that happened in the Bronze Age or about certain um, actions and figures in history or something like that. But, I, but certainly for myself, an appeal to scripture would not constitute enough of a justification. That not, would not convince, it would not constitute evidence that that true belief has really moved itself into the area of what I think of as knowledge. Similarly, um, an appeal to authority, culturally validated authority, um, would, I guess, for many people, probably including myself in this case, actually, justify true belief, providing, and this is a big qualifier, providing those processes of social and cultural validation of that authority are ones that I would coincide with. So, for example, the um, the appeal to some 
kinds of scientific pronouncements. Um, you know, if an established science lab produces certain findings, then uh, to a large extent, or a total extent, I usually assume that knowledge until it's proved otherwise. Because I know that there are validation processes, peer review processes, and so on, uh, in place which um, which make that authority, which give that authority the authority that it has, which just which provides the justification for the true belief that they're having or they're finding. So we're talking about bearing in mind, of course, that they are always contingent and partial. Um, but there are other forms of authority I can imagine, in which I would not agree that the social and cultural processes have validated that authority. Um, I can't think of an example for that right now. But certainly power structures in all societies, including ours, I guess, um, tend to convey, uh, tend to, to allow authority within those societies to, uh, to act as validators. On, um, or justifiers to certain beliefs. Political systems, for example, tend to do that. But again, that's not necessarily, I wouldn't constitute, I wouldn't allow that to constitute knowledge, or I would say that there's something questionable about the knowledge which is produced by that evidential justification process. And also, um, I think, in terms of justifying true belief, I think there's also an appeal to ethics and morals sometimes. And this is one that I find myself doing, but I recognise there's no justification for it, really. Um, sometimes, if you truly believe something, uh, then your desire, I think, to want that to be true, or your need for it, in many cases, possibly, to be true, is sufficient justification. It's a kind of ends, means argument. And again, even though I'm no doubt I do it myself, uh, I don't. It doesn't sit entirely happily with me as a, an evidential process, as a justification that will allow true belief to to, to move itself into a sort of prototypical area of what constitutes knowledge. Just thinking about what I've said so far, it seems to me that the only process that I've uh, said, and I'm just talking off the top of my head here, the only process that I've come up with, which I am happy about, is that um, there's the various validation processes, uh, social and cultural validation processes, that, uh, um, well, that underpin science, for example, in which there are checks and balances to assure that the validation of those authorities is accurate. So I seem to be arguing for a really like empirical understanding of knowledge and, a, and, a, uh, and setting a high bar for what knowledge might constitute and associating it with objective knowledge and you know, sort of uh, prototypical fact-based knowledge, which I guess is just what it is right now, it's fine. Uh, if I was to, to strain to find another, I would have to look to internal processes. I, I can't deny the evidence of my senses. Can't do it. Even when I'm looking at um, optical illusions. Optical illusions are not knowledge. They're not correct. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not, um, no science lab would take an optical illusion and confirm my mistakes, but I can't deny their reality for me. So, in a weird way, personal experience justifies true belief, even though it's always got a rider on it. But I know when push came to shove, if I wasn't thinking about it, I would go, I would have, to, I would respond according to the urging of my. Um, highly subjective and highly fault-ridden perceptual processes uh, and 
uh, and they would justify my behavior even if objective was actually forbidden. Fascinating.